going on everyone so today we're looking at lead code number 150 it's a question called evaluate reverse Polish notation and this is a tricky question um, if you haven't seen it before or aren't familiar with the pattern but once we apply a, a pattern to this a certain pattern it, it's actually not too bad but it can be intimidating at first okay let's take a look at the prompt here we're gonna evaluate an arithmetic uh, expression in reverse Polish notation and so we have operators that are plus minus multiplication and division each operator each operand may be an integer or another expression note that division between two integers should truncate towards zero it is guaranteed that the given reverse Polish notation expression is always valid that means the expression should always evaluate to a result and there will be not any division by zero operation. So that's good to know because there's a lot of edge cases that can happen with a question like this. So it's good that the prompt is upfront telling you that the, the input will always be valid and that two integers should truncate towards zero. Okay, that's important to remember. Okay, so let's take a look at this first example. Here we have two, one, plus three and multiply. And we can see here, if we run this as a normal math operation, we're going to do 2 plus 1, which will evaluate to 3. And then we're going to multiply that by 3, which will evaluate to 9. Here we have a, a longer one. So we have 13 and 5. We divide that first and then add 4. Uh, 13 divided by 5 is going to be 2.6. It's going to truncate to 2. And then we're going to add 4, which is going to give us 6. And here we have a much longer uh, input bit here. Okay, so let's let's think about this, um, how we can kind of approach this. The, the, the main idea is we want to use a stack data structure when we're, uh, when we're trying to solve this problem. Okay, and so what we want to do here is we want to iterate over these tokens. And if, if our element is a number, Okay, so here we're getting to two. If this is a number, we want to push this into the stack. I want to go ahead and push this two into the stack. We go to one here, that's a number. We go ahead and push that into the stack. Now we're going to get to this operator, this plus operand. Okay, and what do we want to do in that case? Well, we want to put pop out of the stack. We want to pop this one out of the stack. We're going to create two variables. We'll have num1 and num2. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run the operator. We're going to pop out this, this one here and set it to num2. Okay, and then we're going to pop out this two and set it to num1. Now we're going to take this num1 and num2 and run it with the operand and get a value, get a total value or a new value. So we'll say new num is going to equal num1 operand, in this case it's a plus, num2. Okay, so that's going to give us 3, and this new num here, we're going to push this back into the stack. So we'll go ahead and push that 3 back into the stack. Okay, and so now we're going to move forward. So we were here, now our token is going to come here. We're going to push this 3 into the stack. And now we're going to come here to this multiplication. We're just going to do the same thing. We're going to pop out this 3 and set it to num2. Okay. We're going to pop out this 3, set it to num1. And then we're just going to calculate the new num by going and uh, uh, running the operand on num1 and num2 right here. Okay. So that's going to give us 9. 3 times 3 is 9. And then whatever's remaining in our stack, the last element in our stack is going to be our answer. Okay, and we can see here we get nine. Let's do one more example, just so it's clear. Uh, we'll do this second one, four, 13, five, division plus. Okay, so let me clear this out here. So we'll have the input four, 13, 5, and I believe it's divide plus, 4, 13, 5, divide plus. 
divide and plus. Okay, we're gonna have a stack. And what are we gonna do? If, as we iterate over these tokens here, we're gonna say, is it a number? If it is a number, we're gonna go ahead and push that into the stack. Okay, we're gonna come here to 13, it's a number, we're gonna push this into the stack. Come here to five, it's a number, we're gonna push that into the stack. Now we come here to this division, and what do we wanna do? Well, we're gonna have a num1 variable and a num2 variable. Okay, and then we're gonna have a new num, which is gonna equal num1 operand num2. Okay, and if the operand is a division, we're gonna truncate it. So that's another thing we wanna remember. It's just a note from the input here that the division between two integers should truncate towards zero. So we just wanna truncate it if we're dealing with division. So what does this look like? This first one we're popping off is gonna be num2, so this is gonna be five. The second one we're popping off is gonna be num1, which is 13. So now we're gonna do 13 divided by five and we're gonna truncate that. 13 divided by five is 2.6. We truncate that, that's gonna be two. We pop these two off, we're gonna push this two back into the stack and then move on with our iteration. Okay, we're at division, now we're gonna to come to plus. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, we're gonna pop off this two and set it to num two. We're gonna pop off this four and set it to num one. And then our operand is gonna be num one, which is four plus two, which is six. Okay, we're gonna uh, run this operation and then set it back into the stack. And then the last element in our stack is gonna be our answer. And we can see here it's six. Okay. So what is our time and space complexity with this, with this particular problem? Well, we have our tokens, and how many times are we iterating over this token array, this input array? We're only iterating over it once, okay? So the size of the input, the amount of work we're doing is linear. So our time complexity is gonna be O of N. Okay, and what about space complexity? Well, because we're pushing and popping off a stack, we could technically just get a bunch of numbers. And so this, the space grows relative to the input in a linear fashion. Okay, so our space complexity here is also going to be linear space. Okay, which is pretty good, it's not too bad. Okay, so let's try to jump into the code and try to code this out. So what do we want to do? Well, first we're going to need a stack variable. So we can say const stack and just set it to an empty array. And then we want to have some sort of data structure to handle the operand and the, the logic that we have to do around that. The other issue is, is if you look at these tokens, these inputs are given as strings. So we also want to make sure that we parse these into numbers as we're pushing and, and popping off the stack actually as we're just pushing off this and pushing onto the stack. So we can create an object and just call it um, operators. Okay. And we'll just set this to um, the four operands. We're going to have plus, and then we can just have a function that this, this maps to, which will have num1, num2, and then it'll just do num1 plus num2. Okay, it'll just return that. Similarly, we can do this for uh, minus. Okay, this would just be num1 and num2 as our input. And then this would be num1 minus num2 as our output. Okay, we're gonna also have multiplication and we'll just do the same thing, num1 and num2 as our input. And then num1 times num2 Let's see, multiply by num2 as our output. 
And then we have division, and this is a little tricky. We just want to make sure we truncate this. So we have num1 and num2, and then we're just going to do a math.trunk num1 divided by num2. Okay, so this object just keeps everything clean. Um, it's all in one, one place. Let's spell const correctly. Okay, and so now what do we need to do? We just want to iterate over our token. So we can just do for let token of tokens. Okay, and we want to check, are we at an operand? And since we have this all in an object, we can just do a simple if statement here. And we can say if operators of token is plus minus strain, uh, multiplication or division, then we just want to go ahead and pull out num1 and num2. So we can do stack.pop. We can just say let num1 equal num2 equal stack.pop and let num1 equal stack.pop. Okay, and now what do we want to do? We want to just run that operator on num1 and num2 and push it back into the stack. We can just do a simple stack.push of operators at token. And this is a function. Remember, this is mapping to a function. And we can just go ahead and parse in num1 and parse int num2. Why are we parsing? Because these are the input is given as strings. We want to parse this to a number so we can actually run these operations on it. OK, so all we're doing here is this operator's object. If it's a plus, it's mapping to this function here, which is taking in num1, num2. We're parsing that num1 and num2. And we're going and putting it into uh, back into the stack. Okay. Actually, to we don't even need to do this here. We could actually just do this this way. Um, let's do it this way. It's actually going to be a little bit cleaner if we do it this way. Okay. We can just we can just uh, do num one and num two for this because we're popping it off the stack. And then here on the else. We parse it here. So we just do stack.push parse int token. Okay, and then at the end, we just want to return the last element of the stack. So we can just do um, return stack.pop. Okay, so what's going on here? So what we're doing here is we're iterating over these tokens here. And we're saying, OK, if it is not an operand, OK, because here we're checking, is that token an operand? Is it a plus minus um, multiplication or division? If it is not that, then we're just going to go ahead and parse that string into a number and then go ahead and push it into the stack. So what's going to happen here? It's going to push in two. It's going to push in one as numbers. Now, when we get to that operand, which is plus, we're going to go ahead and pull out that 1, pull out that 2, and then we're going to run the function of plus with the input of num1 and num2, and then push that back into the stack. Okay, And then what we're going to do here at the end is we're just going to return the last element in that stack. Okay, So let's go ahead and run that. OK, let's submit. And we are good. OK, so that is leak code number 150, evaluate reverse Polish notation. It can seem a little tricky, but once you apply the pattern of a stack to this, you can see that it's, it's actually not too bad. OK, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.